When it comes to meat sticks, there is only one thing that comes to mind. Slim Jim. In today's Slim Jim deep dive, it's time to see if we can make one even better at home. Will using the best beef in the world allow us to create the greatest meat stick of all time? Or are we in for ultimate disappointment? Let's find out. So this right here is the OG Slim Jim. But turns out Slim Jim has drastically increased the amount of products they sell. Okay, so in order to truly understand Slim Jim and get the information we need to recreate one, I am about to do something that no human on earth should ever do, but in the name of science, I am going to taste every type of Slim Jim. Starting with original. Wow, this one brings me back. I kind of keep chewing it forever too, it's like meat gum. So what exactly is in a Slim Jim? We got beef, pork, mechanically separated chicken, water, textured soy flour, corn syrup, salt, dextrose paprika, extra tins of paprika, hydrolyzed soy protein, malodextrin, acid, starter culture, barley milk, extract, citric acid, soy, soy milk. That sounds healthy. Nacho cheese. Not my favorite. Dill pickle. Definitely smells very much like a dill pickle. Whoa, too pickly. No, teriyaki. I'm already completely sick of Slim Jims. We got a little Tabasco collab. This one thick boy. Oh, spicy. Sheesh. Oh, man, that is not good. What's next? Pepperoni and cheese. My cholesterol is already through the roof. This is not helping at all. Savage. We have a deli style Slim Jim, and it is a lot more greasy. Turns out fat is flavor. I actually like this one. Next up, we have a Sonic Chili Cheese Coney. It tastes shockingly like a chili cheese dog. I don't like it. Original and jalapeno cheese. Lord forgive me. Once you start chewing it, break up. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Whew! We have made it. If I had to choose a favorite, I'm going with the deli style. Um, honestly, they're not terrible, but that was just a lot. I guess it's that time we make our own. All right, this right here is a Wagyu A5 steak, literally the best of the best. And this right here is a Slim Jim. In order to turn this into this, we gotta talk about the meat. Okay, so what we have in front of us is quite the unique lineup of meats, and I separated it into two sections. So we'll start here by preparing the meat for our regular Slim Jim recipe, and it all begins with this guy right here, the top round. This is an extremely lean cut. It's actually the exact same cut we used to make beef jerky, but either way, I'm just gonna start by slicing it up. As you can see here, very little intramuscular marbling, which is actually what we want here since we'll be adding that pork fat. Next up here, we have our pork back fat. Now we could use beef fat, but if you're making meat sticks, Pork fat is the way to go when it comes to flavor and color. So for our plain Jane regular Slim Jim recipe, we have about three and a half pounds of that top round and one and a half pounds of pork fat to give us that roughly 25% to 75% meat to fat ratio. The next step is to toss it in the freezer, freezer grinding. And moving on to the meat for our Wagyu A5 Super Premium Slim Jim, it starts with this guy here, the picanha, and we're actually gonna remove the fat cap. So we already have so much fat coming from that Wagyu A5 steak. This right here would just be too much. But here's the thing. I feel like removing the fat cap on a picanha literally goes against all the international meat laws that are out there. I need to get Guga's blessing. If I don't, realistically, the meat gods are gonna smite me. Yo! What's up, Guga? Okay, I have a very important question. So as you can see, what I have in front of me here is a beautiful picanha, which I know you absolutely love, but I need to ask your blessing on this. Don't mess with my picanha, bro. What are you trying to do? Is it okay if one time only I remove the fat cap? Absolutely not. Are you insane? Are you out of your mind? Is there any exception that I could, just this one time? You know, even with my crazy all right, I appreciate the insight as always. Don't mess this up, Max. So basically, if I remove it, we're not gonna be friends anymore? You're pushing it real hard, let me just say that. Ah, okay, well, I'm glad we're on the same page. Thank you very much, Guga. See you, son. Bye. Well, that did not go as expected because unfortunately, this picanha cap needs to come off today. Please do not tag Guga down below. I do not need him to see this and I don't wanna lose a friend today. And meet gods, I'm sorry, for I have sinned. This just feels wrong on so many levels. I can hear Guga screaming at me I as we speak. Insane. Guga, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. The deed is done.
And what we're left with is a significantly leaner picanha, but this meat right here is extremely beefy and it's gonna taste amazing in our Slim Jim. And if I had to estimate, this is roughly 15% fat, which we'll include in our calculations. And I'll just slice it up into more manageable pieces. And next up, we'll move on to our outside skirt steak, which fortunately I feel a lot less bad about slicing up. And as you can see, it has those really thick muscle fibers and just an incredibly flavorful and beefy steak. And finally, we are moving on to our Wagyu A5 ribeye. And as you can see, this is literally as good as it gets when it comes to Wagyu A5. We have a massive cap, and I estimate there's over 55% fat in there. The marbling is just out of control. As you can see, there's some extremely thick pieces of fat in this steak. I'm actually gonna cut around it so we can more easily estimate the total fat content. We got this big hunk right here that'll take off. Then we also have this knob right in the middle. Once again, this just feels incredibly wrong, but we gotta do what we gotta do. And we'll just slice it up, literally like butter. And just like that, based on a series of somewhat complicated math problems, we've achieved exactly 25% fat content with this assortment of meat. We have our Wagyu A5, our straight Wagyu fat, our picanha, and our skirt steak. It is finally time to grind. And we'll start by grinding up our regular Slim Jim, which is just the top round, along with that pork fat. And we're actually gonna do it two times, starting with a more coarse grind, getting all that meat in there, alternating it with the pork fat. And with grind number one complete, time to re-grind it, but a bit finer. Well, I have to say that is quite the intensive process. I am sweating at this point. But either way, we have our twice ground meat. Let's move on to the Wagyu. We're just gonna rip the Band-Aid off and go right in with our Wagyu A5. Grind number one is complete. Switching it out for more fine grind. I'm starting to get the hang of this. Our meat has been double ground. As you can see, the Wagyu A5 one is quite darker than the regular one. I mean, this one here came out to about 20 bucks, whereas this one is literally $250 worth of meat. Time to season. Now you might be wondering, how did I find the exact Slim Jim recipe? I Google the Slim Jim recipe, and guess what pops up? The official Slim Jim recipe on the New York Times. So this is the recipe we're going with. Starting with the paprika, black pepper, sugar, garlic, salt, coriander, cayenne, fennel, and the pink curing salt. Now this is about to be a very intensive process because I don't have a machine mixer for meat. Um, so we're just mixing this by hand and we gotta go ham with it. Should be about eight minutes of mixing. And what we're looking for is something called protein extraction. Man, this is just such a tough workout on my hands. Really gotta have the arm strength, people. Dude, I'm dying over here. What? Our mixing is complete. We have achieved protein extraction, which basically means the meat wants to like stick together. Like so, which is exactly what we're looking for. And for the last minute or so of mixing, I'm adding in our citric acid. Very important not to add this too soon. And just like that, number one is done. Let's move on to the Wagyu. Wagyu Slim Jim. Let's add all the seasonings. Seasonings added. Let's mix. Whew. And just like that, the mixing is done. And it is time to stuff our meat. What are you gonna stuff it with? Well, I'm glad you asked. I present to you, ah, the Meat Master 5000. So is this a sausage stuffer or a medieval torture device? Stay tuned to find out. Ow! Oh. Nah, I'm just kidding. This here is a sausage stuffer. Pretty standard equipment that everybody should have in their house. Very practical for like a Tuesday, Wednesday, kind of weeknight meal situation. So starting here with the non-Wagyu Slim Jim batter, I guess we can call it, into our tube. And we'll reattach. Now we'll add the collagen casing. Whoa! Can you tell I've never done this before, people? Oh, that's a little girth here. Ah! Let's go. Sheesh. Ta-da! And as you can see, we are continuing to improve. We got an air pocket. Oh, this is the best day of my life. Bada bing, bada boom. Look at that guy. Dude, let's, uh, we gotta move on to the next one. This is taking forever. Hang on, I'm just trying to tie up some loose ends in my life right now. I feel that, I feel that. Oh, Tibby has arrived. What are we thinking? 
Not interested. Okay, well, I have to say I am pretty impressed with what we're left with here. A bit thicker than your typical Slim Jim, but I'd say pretty good. Let's move on to the Wagyu. The hopper is completely filled with our Picanha Wagyu and skirt steak assembly. Feels a little sacrilegious that it's in this state right now, but we gotta keep moving. Wagyu Slim Jim incoming, and we're off. That's a short one. There's meat sticks all around you guys. <sighs> Whew, and we're done. All right, guys, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with where we've ended up so far. We're gonna let these sit overnight in the fridge to cure, and tomorrow, we're gonna smoke them. All right, and it is the next day. The cure has fully set inside of our little Slim Jims. And as you can see, they're also a lot more dry, which means they're perfect, ready to be cooked. With our Slim Jims smoking away, I am extremely excited to share that Max Jerky just launched our first ever beef stick, Kansas City Sweet Heat. These are eight months in the making, and honestly, my favorite product we've released so far. They start slightly sweet and finish with a fruity habanero kick. Smoky, juicy, and super addictive. We have both whole meat sticks and bite bags with limited inventory of each, so check them out if you wanna give them a shot. I guarantee you'll love them, but I think it's time we check on those sticks. All right, the wait is over. Here they are. Gotta say, they are looking amazing. To get to this point, I just cooled them down in cold water. And as you can see, there is a little bit of wrinkling, but overall not bad, and that color is fantastic. They both look identical, but we're gonna start over here by slicing into the non-Wagyu Slim Jim. Overall, looking pretty good. Okay, I am dying to finally give these a shot. Took quite a bit of time to get to this moment. Obviously, it's a lot thicker than a typical Slim Jim, but it kind of looks like the deli style one that we had earlier. Let's slice into that Wagyu. Just take off this end piece. Definitely still firm, but quite a bit of moisture in there. A little bit underwhelming because it looks the exact same, but of course what matters most is the taste. Okay, so before we finally taste these, Quick comparison, at least visually, these are the two I made. Right here is the regular Slim Jim. Kinda looks like a tree trunk. It's a lot more dense and kinda looks shriveled up. Our Max Jerky Meat Stick honestly looks the best out of all of them. The color is phenomenal. Got that smoky smell to it. Not gonna lie, the two homemade ones do not look the best. The casing is kind of coming off of them a bit, but overall, I'm still pretty happy with how they turned out given that we made these at home. It's time to see which one of these tastes best. Of course, we have our taste tester, Ty, here. It's been a while since I've thrown this thing on, actually. All right, Kyle, please give me a Slim Jim at random. Number one. I'd know that taste from a mile away. That right there is a Slim Jim. For sure, very processed tasting, but I kind of like it. Number two completely different. Definitely homemade. It's not bad, but it is certainly not blowing me away. Number three. That right there is a meat stick. Obviously, I know that is max jerky. It's a little sweet, but definitely get that nice habanero kick at the end. 10 times better than anything I've had so far today. And number four. Has that same texture as the second one, but the flavor is significantly cleaner. It doesn't taste like Wagyu A5, but I have to assume that it is the higher quality one. This is a pretty good meat stick. Okay, I am 99% sure that I got them right, but... 100%. Okay. All right, so a few takeaways here. Putting a $200 steak inside of a Slim Jim is a complete waste. By far the best was the Max Jerky. Am I biased? Yes, but I promise you it blows these out of the park. If I had to rank them, I'd probably go Max Jerky, Slim Jim, and then my homemade ones. It is kind of depressing though that my Wagyu A5 Slim Jim did not beat this $1 meat stick. But either way, Really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out Max Jerky. We have very limited inventory of our meat sticks. Hope you love them, and I'll see you next time.